Ah, uh, we. This is Spider-Man issue the first by the genius Todd McFarland. This is one of the best-selling comics in the whole world. It's also one of the most underwhelming comics in the whole world. This it has got an amazing cover. This is iconic and classic. It is indisputably one of the most important comic book covers of the 1990s. It's also something that Todd McFarland will be more than happy to keep coming back to and lazily reproducing. There's like three different issues of Spain that all have the same homage to it. Uh, there were a lot of variants to this first issue. All of them were just little colour swaps. Like there's this shiny one. And it looks quite good actually, but... I generally prefer to let the art speak for itself rather than slapping on some foil effect. Uh, I will be giving away a bunch of comics, comics like this, as a 100 subscriber giveaway prize thing when I get to 100 subscribers, so keep watching for that. This comic, it begins a five-part story called Torrent, and it's very much like a prototype for Spain. The writing, the ideas, everything really. It all feels like Spider-Man doing a tribute act to Spain comics. But one thing we do have is fantastic Spider-Man art pieces. This double splash page is almost as well known as the cover. When a lot of people think of Todd McFarland and how he draws Spider-Man, they usually think of this image here. Our story here, it concerns Lizardman and Unterman's ex-girlfriend, Eclipso. It was a pretty minor character, but she was used really prominently in this story. And then in the 90s Spider-Man cartoon, which helped create this weird notion that she was more important than she is. Uh, we have got Spider-Man, he's stopping a mugging and it's always nice to see that. And it's done fairly competently, nice art, and the script isn't outright awful. Uh, here we go though, here is Eclipso, and here is Lizardman. And one of the more useless ideas of this issue is the constant pounding of voodoo drums, which is not only annoying, but also ripped off from Simon Walterson's first issue of Four. The drums, they like make Lizardman go mad and go on a rampage. Now we have got Spider-Man and his main superpower, his supermodel wife, Mary James. The writing here is very dopey and a bit embarrassing. And we juxtapose them doing heterosexual stuff with Lizardman running around to the beat of them drums. And it's the 90s, so they probably have sex. Then we have got a nice splash page showing Lizardman. A lot of Todd McFarlane's splash pages, like this one, you can look at and think that they really could pass the muster and just be a cover. This story, though, was apparently meant to be a quasi-sequel to Spider-Man's last un. And now that intention only makes this really sad. There is a certain arrogance and smugness to think that for your first ever go at writing a comic, you are capable of doing something as good as one of the best Spider-Man stories ever written. But with that said, the majority of the sequels to Spider-Man's Last Un, they have mostly been rubbish too. Even the one that was by the same creative team as the original. But I think Lizardman, he is a Spider-Man villain who could really deal with a deep character exploration type of story. And I can't help but feel that with a scripter or a co-plotter, this could have achieved a lot more. So, after a night of tantric sex with his supermodel wife, Mary James, Spider-Man, he gans out for a fly around New York land, 
which is his other superpower. And we have got the trademark Todd McFarland crazy spaghetti webs. And this sequence of Spider-Man swinging around, it serves no narrative purpose. It really is just there because Todd McFarland wanted to draw Spider-Man swinging around. And believe it or not, we are at the end of the issue. With the teaser that Spider-Man and Lizard-Man will cross paths. And in some regards, I think this is a very bad first issue because nothing happens. We don't even have Spider-Man doing anything besides stopping a mugger and having tantric sex. The art is good and Spider-Man, he felt like Spider-Man, but the underlining thing is that I really want this story to be a lot better than it is. I want the script and the plot to be as good as the art. And the truth is, it's just not. Todd McFarland, he's been ambitious in a lot of regards and he's coming up very short. So I rate it a seven thumbs up and I rate the silver variant seven thumbs up because it's the same comic just with a different cover.